Welcome to Discovering. It's a great time of year to be in the woods. Tonight, we'll take a look at some research being done to help generate a more preferred forest. Looking at regeneration of northern hardwood forest type, and that includes a diversity of tree species. We're also interested in how we can also have deer on the landscape while we're regenerating those trees. And a look at the Norway High School shooting team. Norway was the first UP team, and then Escanaba was the second. Stick around, that's all tonight, right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill, the eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of Northern Michigan. I tagged along on a small part of a large study aimed at researching various forestry methods designed to not only regenerate trees, but regenerate preferred trees. Our plan is to visit two sites today uh, that are part of a large uh, study. We have 140 total sites ranging from just south of Grayling all the way to the tip of the Keweenaw Peninsula. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk in here a short distance and look at one of our treatment types. It'll be a, a large patch or group selection silvicultural technique. And what we're going to do today is the crew is going to be putting uh, cameras out to monitor deer use of these sites because we're really interested in how the deer are interacting with the forest regeneration that's coming up. We monitor deer use inside the harvest area, but then we also keep track of what's going on outside of the harvest area. We put the camera up, they're facing north. These are the outside cameras so that we can see what is going on in the surrounding landscape outside of our uh, hardwood sites. They're all faced north to avoid sun glare because since we're in the northern hemisphere, the sun is coming from the south and it's sunset and sunrise. If they're not faced north, then you get a lot of glare and then you can't see. They're passive, they're not baited. We are in the hardwood treatment site now. And the new thing about the treatment we're gonna look at is that these are a little bit bigger openings than what's been done in the past or the way the DNR has harvested these in the past. We'll see cut areas that range in size from a quarter acre to one acre in size. And each of these sites is 30 acres in size and we've been working with the Wildlife Division and Forest Resources Division of the Michigan Department of Natural Resources to implement a variety of silvicultural prescriptions or different ways to harvest timber to try to regenerate more diverse northern hardwoods. Uh, taken into account, there's a bunch of things going on. There's a long management legacy. There's deer browse impacts. Um, there's insect and disease issues. Um, there's even some climate changes that are going on that are affecting our ability to regenerate these forest types. So the, the DNR is really interested in experimenting kind of outside of the box some different silvicultural prescriptions that we might use uh, to more successfully regenerate this timber type. Uh, this is one of our large gap treatment areas. So this size of opening is a lot larger than the way we historically manage northern hardwoods. And the thought process here is that if we have a little bit bigger disturbance, uh, potentially that'll help some of the tree species we're after regenerate. Uh, because if you look right adjacent uh, to this particular site, uh, you see young trees in the understory, but they're predominantly uh, ironwood. And it's not the, the tree crop that we want in the future. 
So part of the prescription here is we marked the perimeter of this area and then the loggers basically did a little mini clear cut in this gap and their instructions were to pull all of the treetops and the material out of this area so that next summer equipment will be back in here to scarify the soil and apply herbicides to probably kill the sedge mat that you see in some of these areas. Again, the idea being is we create a really good substrate for light seeded tree species to germinate in. So we expose mineral soil with the scarification, kill the competing vegetation, and the thought is, is that's gonna give the trees we want, the species we want, enough of a head start to outcompete things like ironwood and beech, which are a less valuable species. So this camera is focused on a permanent vegetation plot that's out in the middle of this gap uh, where Dr. Mike Walters uh, from MSU Forestry, his crew, is taking real detailed vegetation measurements to keep track of the competing vegetation like this sedge, but also the regenerating trees uh, that are coming in in the sites. It was harvested the winter of 2017, so we're just entering the second growing season for this site. Uh, but even after only two years, we should be seeing uh, tree seedlings uh, coming up um, from the ground. And boy, you look around here and all you see is sedge and, and thistle. I'm not seeing a lot of natural regeneration occurring. Hence the use of herbicides and, and scarification to try to take care of this competing vegetation and give the stand we want a head start. Yeah, so to the you know, the person that doesn't pay much attention to the species, this looks like there's a lot of young trees coming up in this understory, but um, ironwood, ironwood, right in front of you is an ironwood, ironwood. There are a few maple, uh, but some of the data from Dr. Walter's laboratory suggests that these are uh, kind of like a stunted tree. Um, they're finding 30 and 40 year old maple that are this size that aren't releasing up into the canopy. So that's, that's what prompted the DNR to really get interested in this issue and uh, do some things, thinking outside of the box with some of the silvicultural prescriptions. Yeah, so there's no, basically no growing space. You know, if a, if a, if a yellow birch or a light seeded tree species uh, seed dropped on this, there's no chance it'll germinate. Even the heavy seeded tree species like oak have a hard time out competing um, this type of vegetation, you know, so to just get started and get above it, um, they have a hard time, time getting a head start. And we're a little concerned about the, you know, the public perception of herbicides. We're going to do the best we can to, to inform the public of what we're doing. Um, but like in a situation like this, it's a, it's a pretty critical management tool um, to get the valuable northern hardwood stands back that, that we want into the future. We're at another one of our study sites. Um, looks totally different, right? So this is a, a seed tree uh, silvicultural prescription. So what we try to do with this prescription is it's basically a clear cut, uh, but we left six to eight trees per acre of species that we want to seed back in to the, the harvested area. This particular site also had an understory prescription that we call a leave top prescription.
are using the drone to map the leaf tops uh, that are left on the site to look at their like location spatially and match that. We're going to come back out in uh, early winter and get deer tracks, real fine scale, where the deer are moving through um, and how they're interacting with the tops. And um, then we can match that with our other measurements to see if, how well they're deterring herbivory. So I set it for the altitude above uh, surface level. It's at 58 meters and then it goes along this grid and does a double grid going two different ways so that it can collect volume. And depending on how big and tall some of our treetops are, we can uh, calculate not only the area, but the volume of how much wood is left on the ground. And in this prescription, we asked the loggers to leave all the material that was uh, nine inches and below. So you see some pretty big pieces uh, scattered throughout this harvest unit. And the idea being is that these tops, these tree tops, uh, serve as physical barriers to deer. Uh, so it provides the trees a little micro site that the deer can't get to, but that the tree can get up, up through and get above the browse height. So we're, we're asking the firewood cutters to, to not cut the wood. They do not at this point look very aesthetically pleasing, um, but we, I've, I've got really high hopes. I'm really excited about this particular prescription. Uh, because one of the overall goals of this project is to to figure out how to jet regenerate diverse hardwoods and have deer at acceptable numbers that hunters can still have a satisfactory experience when they're out uh, trying to, to hunt deer. So uh, one of the things that's really exciting about this project for me is trying to find that, that zone where forestry and deer hunting can coexist. So I think this treatment has a lot of, lot of potential um, if we can keep the deer off of the, the regenerating trees. This is a 10-year project because uh, that's about how long it takes for the tree species we're interested in uh, to get above the deer browse line. Uh, once they're above that browse line, then we consider them recruited to the stand and they're free to grow up into the canopy. So again, the idea of the tops is to deter, make it tough for deer to get to. So the deer came in and just browsed this maple really heavily. Uh, but what, three or four feet away, there's a really nice stump sprout unbroused that's a little bit further into the top. That gives me hope that we might be on the right track here. On some of the sites, we put up exclosures to keep deer and hare, snowshoe hare, uh, out, of the, out of the area so we could compare an area where we know uh, browsers are staying out of to an area outside of an exclosure. So one of the hypotheses we have is that we can use treetops to function like an exclosure. And unless we have an exclosure to compare it to, we'll really never know if the treetops truly are functioning that way. So we built these exclosures and you can already see this maple sprout uh, right here is actually looking pretty good if you keep the deer off of it. And that's only after a one year of growing season. We put a camera on all our sites to make sure that deer and hare do not get into the exclosure. And right now she's changing the batteries in the SD card. And we'll monitor the long-term vegetation in these plots, compare it to our paired site outside of the exclosure, and we'll really get a good perception then on how the treetops are functioning to deter uh, deer browse on the species we want to have, uh, like this maple right here.
uh, Northern Hardwoods project, uh, big project. Uh, I am not aware of a project this big anywhere else in North America. So I want to take my hat off to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, uh, Wildlife Division and Forest Resources Division. Uh, we also have some industry partners uh, that have offered up sites that have been working with us on this project. And then of course, I'd like to thank Michigan State University uh, for their support and allowing us to do this work. It's America's fastest growing high school sport. With the assistance of hundreds of volunteer coaches and parents, student athletes in grades six through 12 represent their high school by competing in weekly trap shooting at their local shooting range. Any public, private, or parochial high school in Michigan is invited to participate. Currently, there are 66 teams in Michigan. Last year, Norway High School was the first from the UP to join, followed by Escanaba this year. I spent some time on the range with the Norway High School shooting team and coach Al Schultz. Back in uh, 2017, the Michigan Outdoor News newspaper ran an article the uh, spring of 17 on uh, the Michigan High School Clay Target League and my son brought me the article and said hey let's try to do this at Norway High School and so we went to the school board in uh, January and got approved and last year was the first year 2018 we did this and this is our second year and uh, we had uh, six guys on the team last year seven on the team this year and once a week we get together and shoot two rounds of 25 clay birds and we keep track and when the day is done I go back to the Michigan High School Clay Target League website. I enter in the uh, number of shots that the guys hit and that way they're not only competing against themselves on the range for the day of shooting but the other high schools in the league are doing the same thing so we're competing against the other high schools. We have uh, five weeks of competition shooting, we have two weeks of practice, we have one week reserve, and then we have a fun week. We like to say it's the safest sport in Michigan. We don't have any injuries. If you notice when the boys are shooting, their gun is always empty until it's their turn. And that's when they, they walk up to the station with the action open and the uh, gun unloaded. And then when it's their turn, then they put their shell in and call pull and shoot at the clay birds. Well, this year the league started the skeet team. And with the skeet shooting, there's eight different stations. Three of the middle stations, you only take two shots, but the other shots you're taking uh, two single shots first, one from the high house, one from the low house, and then you do a double. Uh, they both come out at the same time, and you have to be quick with your movement and precise with your aiming. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of skill involved. After we're done with skeet, two rounds of 25, we go over to the trap house, and we shoot two rounds of 25 over there, and it's the same thing when uh, we keep score, and at the end of the end of the day, we go back and enter that information on the website, and, and then we uh, see how we, we compare to the other teams in the state. Whoa. When we're shooting skeet, we have two single shots first, and then one double shot. When we shoot trap, it's a uh, individual uh, shot where the, the clay bird comes out in front of you. With skeet, it's either coming at you from the left side or the right side, or could be straight on. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot quicker movement with skeet. You have to set your feet right, anticipate where you're going to shoot, uh, pull the trigger at, then that's where your gun should be aimed. With trap, the bird comes out in front of you, uh, left, right, high or low, and, and it's uh, not as quick of, a, of shooting with, with trap. This whole effort started back in 2000 in uh, Minnesota. And in 2008, they, form, uh, they formed the league. In 2017, there were 23 Michigan high school teams. And in 2018, there were 45. And Norway was the first UP team. And then this year in Michigan, there were 66 teams in Michigan. And Escanaba was the second UP team to join the league. The uh, parent 
league is the USA Clay Target League, and this year there were 20 states with over a thousand teams and over 26,000 students uh, shooting once a week. The league says that if if you can safely handle a firearm, then you're eligible to be on the team, boys or girls. If you're in a wheelchair, if you're on crutches, you just have to be able to safely handle the firearm. I'd like to thank the United Sportsman's Club for allowing us to use the range. And we had a nice donation this year from UP Whitetails for ammunition. And uh, without their help, it would, uh, it would be a lot more effort for uh, this to happen. When we first started this last year in 2018, I had a couple of parents from other schools contact me asking if uh, their, their son could be on the team. And one kid was from Florence, Wisconsin, and I couldn't do that because he was out of state. And the other was from Kingsford, and I had to have the formal agreement between the schools in order to let him on the team, so I, I didn't have that in place. But yeah, there's interest for uh, other kids, and all it takes is one of the other parents to step forward, and like I did in, uh, in uh, Corey Heigel, he's one of one of the parents involved, and uh, Pat Bosen, he's another parent involved, and uh, we meet once a week for eight weeks, and it goes by fast because we're having a lot of fun doing it. Nice job, guys. Yeah, nice really good job. shooting today. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 Fishing Report, TV6 Weather, Shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering 906.